I know I haven't made a video in a while, but it's because I've been working on a new app and it's finally done. Tinned AR. Browse thousands of local augmented reality developers in your area right in front of you. Swipe right to network with other developers and collaborate on projects. Just kidding. That's fake. Obviously. But check out our Discord group to meet other AR developers. Link is down in the description below. Anyway, in my last video, I naively committed to doing a tutorial on placing objects at particular GPS locations. Unfortunately, it doesn't work great. Just know, I really did try because it was one of the most like, requested videos to do, um, but it's just really hard to make it reliable. Not to mention, I'm sick of walking around my neighborhood like a psychopath trying to test this thing. To be honest, the objects only show up where they're supposed to about 50% of the time. Um, they do get more accurate the closer you walk to the objects, and it at least works better than that Car Finder app on the App Store. Either way, I think a better, more reliable method of doing GPS-based AR is something more like Pokemon Go, where you walk around, you're a little blip on a map, and uh, when you walk close enough to an object, then the camera opens and it places the object right in front of you, rather than having to worry about placing objects off in the distance, because then you know accuracy and reliability becomes a problem. So maybe we can do a tutorial in the future on, uh, on a more simple implementation like that. Now I did put the project from the intro up on GitHub, so I'll show you how to set it up and use it later, but I think for now it would be more valuable to you guys if we talk through some of the difficulties in doing something like this. Now I have used Mapbox before, and I know they have a conversions class, uh, that has functions for converting GPS coordinates to Unity World coordinates. I thought I could simply pass in the GPS coordinates and they would appear where I wanted them to. Didn't work. Now the objects show up correctly relative to each other, but they were never exactly in the right place. Uh, so I did some research and I found that my Unity camera needed to be aligned with True North in order for the objects to show up uh, exactly where they're supposed to. So no problem, I thought. Phones have a compass and I can just rotate the camera's parent transform to north and I'll be set. Sounds good, doesn't work. Okay, so this worked kinda, but it was not very reliable. A couple days later, I was talking to my friend Andrew and he was like, dude, there's a setting in ARKit to align the camera with gravity and true north. Just use that. Oh, okay, awesome. I thought this was it. Again, the results were better, but not great. The problem is when you're placing objects far away from the camera, if your phone's idea of true north is off even a few degrees, objects in the distance will appear very far away. Then I was talking to my friend Salty about the project and he was like, why aren't you using the Mapbox WorldScale AR GitHub project? I was like, uh... So I looked into that and in the description they talk about how the compass on the phone is too unreliable and was giving them readings plus or minus 15 degrees, which we already know is a huge problem for this type of application. Now their project uses AR position deltas and GPS position deltas to calculate an angle which is the offset from the AR camera to true north. So basically take one GPS reading when the user starts the app and have them walk in a straight line and take another GPS reading. Then with these two points you can tell which direction that person was walking assuming that their camera is pointed in that same direction. They found that this was more accurate than using the compass and I'm going to trust them because they're the experts. The other issue they try to solve is the drift with AR kit. Tracking is okay inside a small room, but when you're walking outside uh, long distances, AR objects end up drifting far from where they're supposed to be. So if you're into this type of thing, definitely keep an eye on Mapbox. Uh, they just acquired Fitness AR, so they seem to be putting a lot more focus on augmented reality as of late, and they also did this amazing AR navigation demo at Unite Austin. They're also continuing to update this WorldScale AR project, so I would definitely keep an eye on that. Anyway, to get that demo I showed in the intro, I basically combined... Anyway, to get that app I showed in the intro, I ended up combining my own little GPS AR project with the Mapbox WorldScale AR project, 
Uh, so that's what I'm gonna show you guys how to use. So the main issue with this app is that sometimes getting a proper alignment is unreliable. Now when I say alignment, I mean that since Mapbox uses position deltas to calculate heading direction, when you first open the app, you have to make sure a ground plane is detected and then walk in a straight line for a while until it calculates a proper alignment. Only then does the UI show up and the objects are placed. So in this sense, UX design is another hurdle. Uh, but in the enhancements of the project on GitHub, they do give an example of placing cubes down in front of a user to walk through in order to ensure a good alignment. So now that you know the limitations of this project, let me show you exactly how to use it. Uh, you will ultimately need to, account to create a Mapbox account and a GameSparks account. Um, I used GameSparks just so that I could save GPS coordinates somewhere, uh, because during testing you'll be restarting and rebuilding the app quite often. Also, this app should work with ARKit and ARCore, so you guys can't beat me up for only doing ARKit stuff. So first off, let's go to GitHub and download this project. Okay, so let's first go to github.com and let's download this repository. I believe it is called um, Mapbox GPS Head... Yeah, oh, there we go. Max, Mapbox GPS Heading, all one word. And search for that. Okay, Matthew Hallberg, there we go. All right, so first, uh, download this repository. Now, if it wasn't for me adding GameSparks to this, we would have no setup, and it would work right out of the box. But I added that because, honestly, it was going to take an equal amount of time to make like a legit local storage server, so rather than messing with that, I just used GameSparks. Okay, so unzip this, and we're going to open it up in Unity. So open a new project, and I put it on my desktop, so let's just find it. Um, okay, Mapbox GPS Heading Master, open. Okay, so first go to Project, and then in the Assets folder, we're going to have Automatic World Synchronization. This is the scene we're going to be working with. So go to File Build Settings, and switch your platform to Android or iOS, whatever you prefer. Okay, so once this finishes, close out of this, and uh, the first SDK that we're using in this project is the Mapbox SDK, obviously. So go to Google, and we need to get our Mapbox credentials. So go to mapbox.com, and create an account if you don't already have one. Okay, so go to see your access tokens, and uh, copy this to your clipboard. Go back to Unity. And up here in the uh, toolbar at the top, Mapbox, Configure, paste in your access token, and uh, okay, token valid, very good, save, close out of that. Now the next thing we need to do is get our Mac, uh, GameSparks uh, credentials. So go to GameSparks.com and create an account, again, if you don't already have one, make an account, it's free. Now, I'd like to do a full tutorial on this uh, eventually, I think this is a great thing to know how to do, but for now... You know, I'm just going to get you guys literally set up so you can play around with this app. So uh, go up here and do add a new game. So we're going to add a new app. Let's call it, I don't know, Mapbox uh, GPS test. Uh, GPS stuff. And click next. Uh, we don't want any currencies, anything like that. Uh, events, we, we need that. Leaderboards we don't need, teams we don't need, virtual goods we don't need, no achievements, no multiplayer, no messages, no downloadables, properties configure. We don't need that either. So basically we just need cloud code and events. Uh, geo restrictions, don't do any of that. Let's just click create for now. Now what we're gonna be uh, writing things to is if you notice in the app, there is like a kind of create message button. It's a little message bubble. You click that button and then you type in a message and it writes the latitude, longitude, and the um, whatever text message up to your GameSparks database and saves it there. And it saves it in a collection. So if you go to uh, NoSQL collections, um, click the plus button. We want to add a runtime collection. It's got to be the same as in our app. So call it Geo Message, capital G, capital M and create. Now go to configurator and go to events. We're going to add three events. Um, the three events are loading a message so that um, when you start the app it looks, it calls this event and it loads all the messages that are in the database. If you were going to do this obviously on a large scale you'd have to only search like a certain radius 
from where you are, things like that. But we're we're literally just gonna call up to this collection and return all of the results in our database or in our collection rather. Uh, there's also gonna be a remove messages event. So that's just, there's an X button on the UI. When you click that X button, it removes all of the events from this collection. And there's gonna be a save geo message event, which is what gets called when you click that message button and it writes the latitude, longitude, and text up to this collection. Okay, so first we want to add an event. The short code for this event, first we're gonna do load message. So all capital load underscore message. And you have to make sure you're writing this exactly as I am because I already have the cloud code in a text file in the Unity project. So we're just gonna literally copy and paste that. So make sure all these short code names are the same. Um, so name, we're just gonna call it load message, description, loads all AR messages, click save. Um, let's go at, uh, this one does not need any attribute, attributes. So we're good there, save and close. So now add another event, and this is gonna be remove messages. This is what literally deletes all of the messages from this collection. So remove all caps underscore messages. Again, all caps, we'll just call it remove, uh, deletes all messages from collection. Okay, save and close. And then the final one is going to have attributes. This is what actually writes the stuff to the collection. So this is going to be called save underscore geo underscore message. Uh, save geo message. Saves geo message. Okay, that's it. Uh, oh, no, sorry, attributes, add. So this is going to have three attributes. Like I said, first one is lat. Uh, we're going to do all caps. Lat, that is latitude. And that's going to be a string. Um, default value, just set that to zero and uh, make this uh, used in script. Let's add another one. This is going to be long and it's longitude. Zero, do the same thing, used in script. Okay. And the last one is the actual text message that we want to save, like in that bubble that you saw. So uh, text. This is gonna be, just call it message. It's also gonna be a string, default value, none. Doesn't matter what you put there really. And used in script, okay, cool. Oh, save and close. And so we have all three of our events. Now we actually have to add the cloud code that gets executed when these events are called. So go to configurator again and go to cloud code. And let's go to events. So the first one is load message. So let's go back to the Unity project and I have cloud code.txt. Double click this to open in a text editor and we can literally just copy and paste these um, events here. Okay, cloud code for inserting entry. Oh, that's not what we want. Oh, we want load message. Okay, cl cloud code for reading all messages. Perfect. All right, so copy this. Go back to Game Sparks. Paste all that in here. This will load all of the messages. See, it gets the collection up here, loops through the collection, returns all the messages as a messages array. Okay, so that's good. So hit, let's see, where's my save button? Why can't I save this? There we go. Save. Okay, now go to remove messages. Go back, where's my text file? Oh, here we go. Okay, cloud code for dropping messages. Copy those two lines only. And go back to GameSparks and remove message, paste that in, save that. Very good, now save geo message. This is the one that we set the attributes on. So go back to here and this one, cloud code for inserting entry, all of these lines here. Copy this, paste that back in where it needs to go. And as you can see, this is where we are setting, oh, I hope I didn't do anything there. This is where we're setting all of our attributes here, lat, lon, and text. All right, save that. And we should be pretty good to go here, actually. Oh, no, we're not good to go. So we've got everything we need in GameSparks, but we need to go to like the home scene of this project 
And now we need to get our credentials. So let's copy the API secret, go back to Unity, GameSparks, edit settings, secret, paste that in there. Now we need our key, copy that, paste this back into Unity. All right. And yeah, credential device. We're, oh, we're using device authentication here. You have to authenticate with the server uh, in order to save, remove, to execute any events. But what we're doing here is there's a device, device authentication script somewhere here, right here. So this just uses the unique ID to your, of your device to authenticate with the server. So rather than uh, communicate or rather than creating an account, a password, that whole deal, this just uses the unique ID of your device and authorizes it. So it's the easiest way to do this. That way you don't have to worry about, you know, creating UI elements and verifying users, blah, blah, blah. So this is the best way. Now, if we were to click play here, we should be able to authenticate with our GameSpark server. Very good. So we got device authenticated. That means we actually did authenticate with our server. So now we should be good to build this out. Let's go to file build settings, make sure that we have camera usage descriptions and uh, locasage, location usage descriptions in here so we don't get any errors in Xcode. So camera usage, location, location usage, there we go. All right, everything looks good. So we should be able to hit build and uh, get a test build up and running. Okay, so while this is building, I forgot to mention one thing. If you go to my GitHub, um, I do have the other project on there that uses the um, compass rather than this Mapbox project. So this is what, let me show you something. This is what I used before I uh, integrated my little project with the Mapbox AR project. There should be something on here called, uh, let's see. Okay, Mapbox GPS. This will actually work the same way, uses all of the same uh, like cloud code and everything from GameSpark. So if you want to download and try this repository, this is the one that uses uh, the compass to get the, uh, the correct uh, camera direction to true north. So if you want to see how that works, it's not terrible, it's just the Mapbox project works a little bit better. So if you want to try that, uh, you can use that. message right here. Alright, it's pretty far away right now, but you get the idea. Okay, so that's it. That's all I got for today. I promise we will be coming out with a real tutorial in the next video, so definitely let me know in the comments what you guys want to see. Good night.